I was just passing around for you to take a look at it. Every family in Cuba has this. So, but we will go over this later on. So, Las Terrazas is just uh, 51 kilometers away from town, from Havana. It is located in the province of Artemisa. <laughs>
All right. So, uh, first of all, good morning and welcome to Las Terrazas. Woo! After such a nice music, this is not so easy, yeah. <laughs> so, if we're going to talk, uh, or if we have to talk about a little bit about the history of the place, we must go back in time. First half of the 19th century. Why? Because at that time, around 200 French came here and settled down in this area. Nowadays, Las Terrazas Park. Where were they coming from? Haiti. Due to the revolution over there, right? 1792. And then as most of these French people were coffee growers, so once they settled down here, then they began to develop the culture of coffee. So they founded around 70 coffee farms. But unfortunately, their production was good only for about 20, 25 years, no more. Because later, they had many problems. First of all, they lost many workers, slaves. Because many of them began to run away trying to become free. And believe it or not, that time they were quite expensive, right? So it was not profitable to uh, lose so many uh, slaves of those years. Eh? <coughs> Another reason was the method they used to plant the coffee bushes, because mountain coffee is neither too sunny nor too shady. It means that they had to clear the woods, you know what I mean? <coughs> However, years after, due to the rain and due to heat ocean, the soil became too poor for coffee production. Eh? Then, uh, time went by, 1990, I think you know the whole story. Very big economic crisis, you know why, okay? So I think it's not worth printing all the holes already. <laughs> you know, due to that, then changes began to take place in Cuba, especially from 1992, 1993 on, right? Eh? One of the first changes was tourism, which opened its door more widely, hmm? as a fast way to breathe. Breathe. Because air is important, isn't it? You know what I mean? So here, in this area, tourism started in 1994. That's the year when these people then decided to start developing a social cultural project, which so far depends mainly on tourism. It was a year when then a small show was built in the area. This is place called Boca. And it's been the main source of income and employment here in the area so far. So there is a briefing concerning Las Terras Park. If you used to ask any question now, you can go on. First of all, could you follow me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're very kind. Thank you. Explain Mocha a little bit more. Mocha. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Explain a little bit more about Mocha. Mocha, well, you know, Mocha is the name of a variety of coffee. It's also the uh, seaport in the Arabic Peninsula. It was also one, the name of one of those French coffee farms. Now, the name of our hotel, small hotel, only 42 rooms, eh? but very comfortable and uh, well located, trying not to spoil the uh, the uh, forest anyway. You will see that, huh? Eh? As we get to town. Yes, ma'am. So, is the economy of the town primarily, it's tourism is? Uh, mainly tourism, yeah. And are there other? Uh, sure, all right. Uh, around, nowadays around 1,014.5 people live here in the village. They all work here in the area. What do they do for a living? Apart from working in uh, tourism, was working at health mm -hmm. and services. Because downtown up here, remember, there's a small clinic. We're going to visit it, okay? All is working agriculture, oh, education, beautiful. culture, and the forest, okay? That's what they do here for a living, anyway. Then it comes to uh, the topic of recycling. And it is very interesting because usually youngsters that are in junior high schools, uh -huh. they have these programs that have to do with urban planning and uh, preserving the environment mm -hmm. and that has to do with the cleaning of the areas like the beach areas okay. and mm -hmm. how to um, orient people and educate people on the protection of the environment. So these are right. two topics that are really connected. Good, mm -hmm. certainly. And it works like very well.
felt last last month the yeah. Earth Day for the planet oh, Earth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of information on the media. Twinkie. They clean up the environment. We love our vultures. Well, they got this. I'm not sure what all of you do. Well, they got this. Well, they got and are those woodpecker holes? Over 60 years to become right now. So yeah, you, you planted okay. many, many mahogany trees. Oh. Yeah. Okay, please. So welcome to the Eastern Republic of Uruguay Mixed Center. So there are different levels here. So preschool, elementary, secondary, junior high, technica. Technical uh, class, and it's also a technical class. Y and special education class. Es un centro escolar que trabaja de la hora de 8 a 4 y 20 de la tarde. So they work 8, 8 o'clock in the morning through 4.20 every day. That is Monday through Friday, September through July, long term. So it includes uh, lunch and then two snacks uh, a day. You know, when we celebrate the May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, right? But what? Wow. What happened on the May the 5th? Independence of Mexico. Yeah, no, no, no. Your, your birthday? Ah, and Karl Marx's birthday as well. That's when Karl Marx was born. Right? Okay, that's why May the 5th. I visited Marx's house in Trier, Germany. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Is there any other question here so far? Sure. You also visited the Kremlin. Oh, oh the what? In uh, 1986. Uh, have you one, stolen one question here. Sí, sí. One question here, one question there. Okay, um, como profesor en Africa, estaba Peace Corps in Africa. Y tenemos 40 estudiantes en varias clases, en todas las clases. No era problema. Uh, lo, los disciplina. La disciplina. N ningún problema con disciplina. Pero en los Estados Unidos, para mí, en 7th grade... Is referring to the fact that when he was teaching in Africa as part of the Peace Corps, there were uh, 40 students per class. There were no discipline pro problems, but... En América, con 15 estudiantes, es un problema. With in North America, with 15 students per class, it is a problem. It's a big problem. Y aquí? And what about aquí here? No hay problema. No hay problema. Here. Uh -huh. Bueno, eh, la escuela cuenta. No la escuela cuenta con un reglamento escolar. <laughs> reglamento escolar que baja del Ministerio de Educación y es adaptado al centro escolar. Este reglamento escolar, después lo explico. Este reglamento escolar es estudiado por los miembros del Consejo de Dirección, por los padres, por los alumnos, elaborado con acciones que ellos mismos contribuyen dentro del reglamento, que se aplica a partir del 1 de septiembre con la aprobación de los alumnos y los padres en aptas, donde los estudiantes tienen una serie de limitaciones de reglamento a cumplir en la escuela, que por eso es que es un éxito en realidad el reglamento escolar dentro de la escuela, no solamente en este centro, sino en todas las escuelas del país cuentan con este reglamento. A ver quién le ha hablado. Sí. No, tú me avisas si ¿Tú quieres? No, no, no. Sí, en Cuba, first of all, there is a reglamento que no me acuerdo. Es un guide guide. Discipline guide in a program, ¿ok? In which different elements participate. So, first of all, from the national. Educational. Educational, ¿ok? Well, level. Because in the, in the United States, um, public schools, poorer students, are forced to take tests that are stupid. And the people are stopping, they're refusing to take these tests because the teachers only teach the material that's in the test. 
and the students don't learn like other things that they need to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a big movement that's starting in, in the United States to reject these standardized testing. Mm -hmm. Hay un movimiento muy fuerte en los Estados Unidos que va en contra de la estandarización de los exámenes. Porque en las escuelas públicas donde los estudiantes incluso son los, los más pobres en este caso, se les enseña justamente lo que van a tener en los exámenes que van a ser calificados. Y fuera de ahí los estudiantes no reciben ninguna otra información ni ninguna otra ningún otro conocimiento válido para la vida. Eh, esto es algo que ustedes conocen, es algo que lo que han oído, cómo se manifiesta el, el, el conocimiento, lo que se enseña y lo que se examina. Habla un poquito de eso. Bueno, no me he conocido de este movimiento de Estados Unidos. I haven't heard about this movement in the US. Pero sí le puedo hablar lo que hacemos nosotros. But I can tell you about the things you do here. Bueno, en nuestro país, para dar respuesta, en nuestro in país, country, los programas de estudio son nacionales. As I told you, the programs standardized. are standardized at a national level. Que llega la misma asignatura, el mismo contenido a todas las escuelas del país. Se planifica en dependencia de las particularidades y las características individuales de cada grupo, clase, cada escuela, cada mundo. And they depend, apart from that, they depend on the characteristics of each of the groups that are going to receive that kind of knowledge, depending on the uh, geographical area they are located at and so on. Bueno, eh, los estudiantes no, a ver, eh, en cada escuela no hay un por ciento general de estipulado. No se estipula porque uno trabaja con el niño. Ahora, ¿qué sucede? Cuando un estudiante suspende una prueba final, tiene un periodo de revalorización. Si tiene una segunda convocatoria para que el niño revalorice. So when we have students that fail the test, like a final test, there is a second opportunity for that student to go to a second test. But when we have, and this is one thing that he made reference to, when they have a specific student that has been having problems due to the systematic test or control test, then they start working with that student. So, for example, there are children, I'm sorry, there are children that could kind of fail first grade, and these are children that, or cases of students that are analyzed in a kind of a, an orientation diagnosis center, which means that in this center there are specialists that diagnose the student depending like dyslexia, if there's like dyslexia. some kind of mental retardation yeah. or if there's any knowledge acquirement problem right. so that they can diagnose that from the very early stages. Right. And compulsory education starts at kindergarten? La educación obligatoria empieza con el desde el círculo hasta preschool. Preschool. It is not it is not compulsory in kindergarten. No. Preescolar, it's preschool, preschool up to ninth grade. And what age do they get algebra? Uh, how the young children between just developmentally slow and the real learning Can you repeat the question? Yes. How do the diagnostic centers tell the difference between a first grader who's developmentally slower and or has a real learning problem. En el caso de los centros de orientación diagnóstica, ¿cómo es que ellos pueden hacer la diferencia entre un estudiante que tiene un problema de asimilación del conocimiento y lento o no realmente un problema They are five years old. And they are getting ready for a diagnosis kind of test that they are going to have very soon. The students are going to see 
sing a song to us, and the director is explaining to them who we are. He's explaining that you are going to participate in the May Day Rally very soon, and that you wanted to come visit them for a while. They are going to sing the song that's called The Little Spider. Wichi wichi araña al palo se subió, vino la lluvia y todo lo mojó. Luego salió el sol y todo lo secó. Y wichi wichi araña al palo se subió. Do you want to get up and lead it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> we have the same song. A little bit different in English. Yeah. Right. It's a spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. <laughs> So this is the, the place where they come and do the practical parts of their class, of what the, they learn in the class as part of the theory. If you have questions here. So do they come to this lab once a day, once a week, once a month? When they are in eighth grade, they come twice a week. And when they are in ninth grade, they come three times a week. So it starts in eighth grade physics. Comienza en octavo grado entonces la física. That's right. It starts in eighth grade. Because in seventh grade they have a, a, a class that is called natural sciences. So that's an integration and general knowledge in all sciences. Is there equipment you would like to have that um, you're not able to get? Hay algún tipo de equipo que ustedes les gustaría tener que no les es posible tener ahora? Que necesitaría. They have. Dentro, dentro del módulo que les da eh, el Ministerio de Educación. They have all the equipment they need because it's just uh, distributed evenly throughout the country and regulated by the Ministry of Education. So the, the state makes sure that all the schools count on the necessary equipments for giving these classes, like our specific classes. Para qué son estos equipos que tienen el medio? This is a sound generator. This is an air So it is used for uh, filling like a vacuum uh, veil to show that there is propagation of the air mm -hmm. to demonstrate that. This is the part that is used for teaching mechanics. See, this is electromagnetic equipment that are used in this kind of class. This is an oscillation equipment. This is, uh, I mean, the, an equipment used for oscillation of the waves in the water. This has to do with uh, electricity when we talk about circuits and amperímetros, um, Okay. 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 This is electromagnetic induction equipment and uh, an induction engine 
electroscopio. Esto es para ver las líneas de inducción del campo magnético. This is just to, to analyze the lines of induction of the magnetic. Esto es un imán. Y estos son agujitas, ¿ves? Eh? And needles, so that you can just... Oh. Mm -hmm. Otra pregunta. They introduced the topic of photovoltaic energy. That's high school. In high school. Okay, you can pull it out of the bag. Okay, we shall continue. <laughs> Okay, show me how you open that type of thing. Strength, raw physical strength. Oh, it slides from the bottom. Okay. Ah. You have to not hold this part and then slide it. Oh, actually, I guess it doesn't matter. Do it. This is my box. Sink. Two. Are the two or <laughs> So. And the main diseases that we see are hypertension, asthma, and diabetes. So, and the main task that the family doctor has is just to welcome patients here at the consultorio, but they also have another part of the job that is visiting the patients at their homes. And these are visits that they make uh, to the elderly or people that are on bed that cannot walk to the consultorio. We also assist pregnant women up to the uh, 37th week of pregnancy. And from that moment on, they go to the maternity home or to the specialized hospital. Once they give birth, they do the follow-up of the newborn here. Every 15 days. So, remember that when we talk about um, healthcare in Cuba, we basically focus on uh, preventing, I mean, preventive health care. And the consultorios were precisely created to prevent the diseases in the population and to assist the people at the community level. So that is the work of the consultorios and the clinics, the polyclinics that maybe we'll be lucky to visit during the program. So that is why they work together with the community and they have all the necessary means they need to assist the community right here. If the person needs to have a specific test, then they send it or they transfer that person to the polyclinic. If in the polyclinic it needs to be uh, to do some deeper research on a certain disease, then you go to the tertiary level of healthcare, which is the specialized hospitals. So that's how it works here in Cuba. But we are open to questions. I guess that questions will do better. What is your policy on immunization? What is your policy on the immunization of Cuba? The last time we have in Cuba is We have a vaccination campaign in Cuba which is mandatory. It's obligatory, but it's not discussed with all the patients. And there is no problem because all people are vaccinated. Children, adults, the elderly, and these uh, vaccination campaigns are also supported by the mass organizations. Take pictures if you want to also.
Ya, por el nombre del ingrediente activo, que es básicamente el producto que tiene. Pero, are, you, are these the medicines that you're taking right now? Can she check on them? Ok, great. Estas son las medicinas que yo estoy tomando ahora. Sí, Ok, that's uh, prednisone. And you're taking this. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, if that tape had gone, yep. gone, thousands of people would have been. That's right. Oh, it Made a mistake. I know. Oh, I'm so embarrassed for you. <laughs> oh, I love that rolling across the, the arms. Yeah, isn't that neat? I, if I lose it, it goes down. Whoop. <laughs> as soon it's as. Not, it's really hard. <laughs> um, but it looks so cool when you get it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the chest roll. Okay. Yes! Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> okay, you want to see one trick that I've been working on? I do. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if you can either. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> I can blow your nose. I know. <laughs> okay, it's a plastic surgery. So, are there hoopers here? Uh, not are that I've met, but I've given out a bunch of hoops, so I don't know. Ah, bravo! <laughs> this is beautiful. And we do three in a row, right? Once we get to the top, how we will, one of them has been partially restored, and then we spend the whole process doing it. All right. That area down there used to be the selection area, where we manipulate the beans according to size and quality, mm. but they did it by hand. Huh? Same way we do it nowadays at home. Mm -hmm. That's the traditional way to do it. All right? Let's see remains of the slave's barracks. Okay. Okay. Alright, on this side here, you will see remains of the slaves' barracks where they used to live. As you can see or will see, there were small rooms in which they said that from two to four slaves lived. At the beginning, they had to be from the original scene there. Later, uh, they were forced to learn a Catholicism, but in order not to lose those customs and rituals, but then it was to syncretize both religions. Mm -hmm. For each Catholic saint they had their own saint or oricha, and that's not in Cuba and so in the States as Santeria. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about it? Yeah. 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 Good. Okay, lots of people write to this kind of religion nowadays in Cuba. It's part of our culture anyway.
So those little cradles there, they're just for garbage? Right, yeah. Garbage. Maybe this. Nowadays for garbage, huh? Yeah. Okay. But many years ago, they were used to keep pork crackling fresh. Keep what? Pork crackling fresh. Oh, wow. Oh. No fridges in the countryside. Yeah. So they had to find a way to keep them fresh. So they filled those baskets known as cataburo. That's the name of these baskets. Huh? They fill them with these, uh, <coughs> sorry, pork crackings. Huh? Tie them with a rope to the roof of the kitchen. That's tajona or tajona. How it burn, huh? Many milk. So they put the dry beans with a shell on. made out of wood so not so heavy try not to break beans most of the time pulled by animals especially horses and mules but maybe I think some every now and then they just use slaves to push it in that way they husk them right but how did it keep from breaking them Pardon? how did they there? not break Didn't no you think? once you start husking them so the, the, the shell becomes like a spring of mattress, huh? Yes. That avoids doing this. And apart from that, that, uh, what do you call it? Arm, what do you call it? Arm, Arm. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. should have reached the other side, and then, that works with a rake, kind of rake. Uh -huh. Same time you were moving the wheel, uh -huh. so that rake was removing the beans as well, okay? Mm. Good, smart people. Oh. <laughs> I just pushed it before, it's remarkably uh, easy. I'm teaching her how to do it. Okay. Come on. Be lost for you guys are just late. Sorry about that. Whoa. Oh. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Good. Let's show up. You're fired. Mm -hmm. Now we've been talking about coffee. Let's go to town to have the cup of coffee. Yeah. yeah. The array, of course. Vamos. Of course. This way. Vamos. Oh. Natural beehive. On the red, the red bark tree. What kind of tree is it? Red bark. Red bark. What's the name of the tree? Gambolin bull turpentine. Hey, espresso. Please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 make nine, 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 ten, 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 Cafe de Maria. Who's Maria? Maria is the lady who used to run a small coffee shop. This is part of her of her shop, huh? And then if you wish. Can I have a coffee with that? That would be a cortado. That's what we call cortadito. It's a dark black coffee with a little bit of milk. Yeah. She used to run a small coffee shop. And then uh, she became very famous because of that. She has a small job, but after that, she began to run a small coffee shop, which is not private, huh? it's part of the whole project. And then, uh, on her honor, so that's why Cafe de Maria is something you can drink here, because it does with a special kind of liquor. Uh, this is the liquor, huh? We use produced only in Pinata Rio. Guayabita del Pinar. It's with a little guava, huh? It's just a grow here in Pinata Rio. If you say carajillo, it's espresso but with rum. It's like different, huh? It's something real from here. Ca Cafe de Maria. Okay, I think the Cafe of Maria. Okay, Cafe de Maria. Cafe de Maria 1, Cafe de Maria 2, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9 Marias, 9 Marias, 9 Marias, 9 Marias, 9 Marias, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9,
So let me apologize, eh? With her first of all. She'll we'll come here before lunch. But anyway, the natural clock was striking, so we had to answer, eh? The call. Oh, yes. The call. So she's Dania, the lady in charge of this center, okay? She's gonna give you some general information. So my secretary is gonna help me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so first of all, welcome to the Daker Center called the Little Terrace, La Terracita. So as you, I mean, it is named after Las Terrazas Complex. So the name of the place. So we have 60 children at the moment at the Daker Center. So we have like four levels of education, four classes in the Daker Center, like first year, second year, no, second or third year. Elementary. <laughs> And uh, how do you say sing in cantata? In cantata, it's a bit too small. It's okay. And then from four to six, parents come up with up to two. Ahí lo estaban grabando ustedes cuando Leite estaba tocando y ustedes también estaban tocando el teléfono. Todos estos son construidos de. ¿En ustedes les uh, construyeron? Bueno. Eh, no es... Oh. Oh. Muy bien. Oye. ¿Sí? Qué muy bonita es. I know, I'm so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm so cute. I'm so cute. i Muy bien. Eh, son... Cocina. <laughs> Importante. Oh. Oh. Earth with an elephant, see? Bueno, I know. Ah, no es tanto difícil. Yo puedo le hacer. No, le quemó. ¿No? Ay, la joya. Está la joya, está abajo. ¿Hm? Está la joya. 
Oye. Oye. ¿Lo visto? Esto es un Esto, sí. Ah. Fantástico. Uh, es muy bien, son las, las um, ¿qué hay? ¿Es un um, elefante? No, los parados. Para, ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Parados? Parados. Paro. Ah, ah, sí. Candela. Candela. Y los dinosaurios. Uh -huh. oh. Okay. We are going to get away with the rain. Okay. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Oh no. Chelo, mira, abuela aquí. Y entonces sale con nosotros. No. We won't have to take a shower. Look. Always look on the bright side of life. Do 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 do. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So, um, on behalf of the people in town, on behalf of the workers, on behalf of myself, thank you for having come to our place, okay? So we hope you could enjoy the day today and the tour, the park, and we hope to see you soon again. Yeah. Maybe for next, first of May. You see. never know. Uh, yeah. Don't forget Las Terrazas, okay? Thank you once more. And thank you for your appreciation as well. Huh? I remember that there was a moment, um, maybe, um, six or seven years ago in which there was a, um, there was a program led by the government uh, for those uh, excellent workers at the different um, uh, working institutions or centers when they were like uh, vanguards uh, uh, because of the great job they did all year round they were given the possibility of, of getting a TV set 